you wanted the best, you've got the best podcast. The hottest, hottest. podcast in the world. In the world. The Chris Voss Show, the preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. The CEOs, authors, thought leaders, visionaries, and motivators. Get ready, get ready. Strap yourself in. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Now, here's your host, Chris Voss. Hi, uh, folks. It's Voss here from the Chris Voss Show.com. The Chris Voss Show.com. Welcome to the big show, my family and friends. We certainly appreciate you guys coming by. What would we do without you folks? We'd just be sitting here talking to a mic and uh, talking to ourselves, which is pretty much uh, any time on a Sunday night where I'm just sitting there drilling out the side of my mouth, talking to myself, and then the order leaks come by and give me my medicines. So, welcome to the show. As always, refer the show to your family, friends, and relatives. Go to goodreads.com forward slash Chris Foss, youtube.com forward slash Chris Foss, linkedin.com forward slash Chris Foss. All those crazy places on the internet. There's a there's a me that my particular version of Chris Foss. Um, today we have an amazing author on the show, and gosh darn it, do we always have the smartest authors on the show? The most brilliant people. Uh, we've had smart discussions all week. I've learned so much, and uh, this the, I've learned so much that there's a glow to me. And it, it, it could be from watching Oppenheimer, the nuclear movie, or it could be just from learning so much. Anyway, uh, she is the author of the newest book that just came out July 18th, 2023. Beastly. Uh, which, is it a story about me? No, it sounds like, it sounds like everything my ex-girlfriends have called me. No, I'm just kidding. Let's restart that. Beastly. This. <laughs> I'm sorry. Her book is called Beastly. The 40,000-year story of animals and us came out July 18th, 2023. Keggy Crew joins us on the crew today, and she's going to be talking to us about her latest book. She is the author of Dadland, uh, which won the 2016 Costa Biography Award. Before writing, her career was in contemporary art. She was born in Gibraltar and lived in West Cork, Barcelona, Texas, Auckland, and London. How'd she get Texas in there? That's weird. Uh, she now lives in Wiltshire with her husband, and they have a small nature reserve. Uh, Quick Sand Tales was published by Canagate in 2018. The tonic for the tortured and cursed Joshua Ferris, according to him. Uh, welcome to the show, Keggy. How are you? I'm very well. Thanks for having me. There you go. And is that a quote from Joshua Ferris, or were you referring to him as a no, no, it was a quote when he read when he read Quicksand Tales. That's what he wrote about. Oh, okay. It's All funny. right, I wasn't I wasn't sure if you were accusing him of something. No, so no. Welcome to the show. Congratulations. Uh, give us a dot com. Where do you want people to find you on the internet, please? Um, I'm Keggy Carew, K E W G I E C A R E W dot co dot uk. That's my website, and um, I'm on Twitter as Keggy C at keggy c and i'm on instagram and uh, i'm not very good on instagram i've only just started that but i am on twitter so there you yeah, go I'm easy there i'm you. easy to find with the net with my name i'm very easy to find there you go and i'm sure people are asking where you, the name keggy came from i was referred to as keggy in college but that was because i was the guy who knew how to open up the kegs yeah, yeah. for the pump uh so where does that originate from well, it comes from my, my brother i blame my brother i was born in gibraltar uh we had a spanish uh, nanny my dad was in the army um and um yeah they, they just seemed to between them call me keggy and i have never been able to get rid of it so I've, this is the first time i ever heard of a brother naming a thing where your parents just lazy and they didn't yeah, want very to lazy. Or... yeah really lazy very very yeah we had a, we had a terrible job like uh at the birth they're like doctors what do you what do you name want to name the baby uh, i don't know let the let yeah. that kid choose yeah, yeah the yeah. one yeah well, it could have been worse, I suppose, then, really. Yes. I mean, it's it's not bad. I don't mean to imply that, but you could have been named like a four-letter expletive, and then you would have, yeah. you, know, you walked it, around. It, it rhymes with leggy. There you go. There you go. Well, it's hard to forget then. Yeah. Uh, so you've written your latest book here, Beastly, and evidently it's not about me and, uh, from what my ex-girlfriends call me. But uh, tell us about what this story is, the 40,000-year story of animals and us. Yeah, so um, Beastly is like the 40,000 year story of our changing kinship with the animal world. And so that's from with the, you know, the, the smallest 
from the smallest microbe to the largest animal that, le that ever lived. And that's from, you know, literally the cave painting, cave, the cave painters at the birth of human culture mm. to now. And um, so I, it, it travels through, it, you know, I, I explore the relationship through history, uh, science, culture, and the most in incredibly ex inspiring examples of um, humans that have stepped closely into animal worlds. And so we go, you know, we literally go from cave painters and hunter gatherers to farming to domestication, from uh, we go from God to science. Uh, we get go through all sorts of misunderstandings, uh, how language um, shapes the way we think about animals, all sorts of mistakes that we've made along the way, all sorts of extraordinary discoveries. Um, like, you know, for instance, we go, I mean, we, you know, we might start, the moment we moved into cities, for instance, we start mm -hmm. um, taking breaking the cycle of fertility. And that story goes from sort of Karl Marx on, on the banks of, of the Thames, horrified at all the pollution, to ha herring off to the Chincha Islands and s sort of taking all the guano to a commandeering Johnston Atoll and turning the wildlife uh, atoll into a nuclear testing ground. So th it's full of fascinating stories, but also revealing stories which tell about our relationship with the animal world. Um, and I mean, basically, it 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 teaches us also about the, uh, the ecological roles of animals, which is so important and which you know, it's sh shockingly, so many of us don't understand, and mm. how they are really the key to the planet's health, um, and how basically, if we understood all this, they might save us. If we could save them first so that in a nutshell now does the book start out with that uh, snake and those two naked people and the apple and stuff is that where it all starts it, i'm an atheist so i'm telling a joke here. yeah yeah uh, <laughs> no the book, the book the book actually doesn't start there the book starts before what? then um and in fact it's in, really interesting that um aristotle 350 years before B bc right mm -hmm. Uh, he, what, what, what I found it absolutely incredible was that, you know, Aristotle observed, he's one of, almost the first zoologist, and he observed the octopus's sperm presenting arm, right? It, it, the octopus has an arm that actually literally hands over a packet of sperm to the female. Wow. Now, yeah. So Aristotle in 350 BC just observed that and he, what was he uh, doing to observe that is my he was, question he was he was wading around the the, uh, the greek lakes looking is, at sea creatures is this and an only fans asking, channel or something i don't know about yeah like, and asking fishermen to bring in specimens and really really looking okay. at the natural world like really really mm -hmm. looking at it and then we had this sort of 2000 year absolute stasis of you know when when religion basically stepped in and um, used creatures as sort of moral ciphers for good and evil. Mm. And, you know, so 2,000 years later, after that observation, Eric Topsell wrote this book called Four Footed Beasts. And he divided creatures, this is in 1607, divided creatures into three categories tame and wild, um, edible and inedible, and useful and useless. Mm. So, you know, I mean, those yeah. are all categories that my ex-girlfriends that also yeah. called me beastly refer to me and put me in. Right. Well, she she should read the the history of four footed beasts. Then. Maybe that would help. I don't yeah. just throw it at me. Um, so this is really interesting. Uh, my biggest question is, you know, the book purports to be uh, the four thousand forty thousand year story, but it's only three hundred eighty four pages. Like, how'd you get all that in there? Right? Yeah. Well. Yeah. I mean, you know. It's story. I didn't say it's all the stories. Oh, okay. You know, it, but it's a hell of a lot of them. I, you know, there you go. It's an awful At least lot. Three hundred eighty-four. Yeah. Huh? Three hundred eighty-four. So, how did you decide what were the stories to tell that were most important? Okay, so I, I, the, the stories that were the most revealing mm -hmm. about the paradox of our relationship, the stories that were the most fascinating, the most you know, mind blowing. I mean, animal, the animal world is a pretty mind blowing place to be. Mm -hmm. um, so like, for instance, okay, 
a, a, a couple of stories to show how how we underestimate animals and how intelligent they are. So from the smallest, you know, smallest little creature to the to the big intelligent creature, I'll give you two stories. So di dicrocoles mites. So they're parasites that live in a knock tweed a knock tweed's moth's ear, right? So they're oh. parasites and they to, to live in the ear, they break the tympanic membrane. But the brilliant, extraordinary thing about these parasites are that they will occupy only one ear of the moth because if they break both ears, the moth can't hear and so it can't hear um, echolocation of the bats. So bats would eat the moth and that wouldn't be very good for the parasitic mites, right? Wow. So, so the parasitic mites send scouts they, they send scouts to the other ear to bring back any wayfarers so if any little parasites wander off to the other ear the 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 paras the um the dicrocoles mites bring them back to the other ear and they never ever infect both ears that's that's parasite intelligence right you just get like a megaphone hey don't go over the other ear eh? Absolutely. I mean, it's just an incredible thing. So, so that went in the book because I thought that that was a very, very interesting thing. The megaphone might be more and Maybe humans could learn a, a thing or two from these, yeah. these parasites. Yeah, because I think they have small arms too, so it would be hard to hold it, but it would be neat. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Hi, folks. Here's Foss here with a little station break. Hope you're enjoying the show so far. We'll resume here in a second. Uh, I'd like to invite you to come to my coaching speaking and training courses website. You can also see our new podcast over there at chrisvossleadershipinstitute.com. Over there, you can find all the different stuff that we do for speaking engagements, if you'd like to hire me, uh, training courses that we offer, and coaching for leadership, management, entrepreneurism, uh, podcasting, corporate stuff. Uh, with over 35 years of experience in business and running companies as a CEO, and be sure to check out Chris Voss Leadership institute.com now back to the show it, it, and do you talk about how this developed or why this developed uh, some of these things developed in that way what do you mean how but how, how well i do yeah i mean you know well that's evolution i mean they're not going to survive i mean the incredible thing is is that you know you me that fly buzzing around the studio the spider in the corner of this this old room yeah so we are the, we are a 3.8 billion year line of unbroken chain of success. So that's why we exist. So that's, There's still time. That, still that, so that incredibly long chain has been refining and refining and refining. And um, yeah, yeah those, those parasites wouldn't be around if the moth, you know, was flying around um, without being able to hear the um, bats like echo location. So it just wouldn't last. So yeah. yeah, so I do, I do go into all those things. I do, I do explain how nature functions and I do use some fantastic stories to explain that mm -hmm. because it, it, it completely blew my mind that there are so many brilliantly educated people out there that really haven't a clue about the animal world. And um, I've seen a few of them. Yeah. But it's worrying, Chris. You know, I mean, it, 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 it's, it's very worrying because I, for me, animals are really the key to the planet's health and in all the talk of climate change and all this um the disasters you know that that we're constantly coming at us mm -hmm. in, in 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 the news every day it, animals just are like a, a wild world is like an adjunct by it's it, the adjunct biodiversity right so mm -hmm. bi biodiversity is usually just tacked on and it just even the word is a problem it's like um I've, i call it like a soap powder, biodiversity. It, you can't imagine what that is. And what it is, is all of life. Mm -hmm. and, and all of life, you know, the animals are the maintenance crew to all our eco, all our living systems. You know, they, they literally guard in the blue and the green planet and we wiping them out, you know, and we're wiping out our future by doing that. And so it seemed to me that I, you know, <laughs> I took it upon myself to inform humanity about about the incredible, you know, incredible importance of animals to uh, for our survival, and also just the extraordinary, the mysterious, their their, their mysterious selves, you know. So hopefully, uh, we need to start caring about them. We do. 
because yeah. some of those animals taste really good. So well, I'm all I know that. they do, and that's how they grow. We have to do the jokes, and and the lettuce is good too. I'm, I'm a big fan of of uh, lettuce and broccoli and <laughs> and all that stuff too. But you know, I'm telling you, that's a living organism as well. Um, but uh, so you bring us back to reminding us that uh, you know everything's kind of important. We hang in the balance as a planet, um, you know, as a subsystem or a system of uh, of uh, you know uh, everybody. You know, I eat the cow. You know, I I, I have a dog. It chases the cat. That cat chases the mouse that sort of thing basically yeah there. yeah there no i mean everything is connected you know like we are all connected that's what i was trying to say yeah we but, but more than the fact more than the fact that your cat chases the dog or the other way around mm -hmm. um, but we are all reliant all species are reliant on other species mm -hmm. and um i mean you know take Take the whale. Let's let's have a look at the great, the, the biggest animal that ever lived. Mm -hmm. That um, had an enormous impact on climate, you know, before whaling, before whaling began, because their numbers were so huge. And I mean, each great whale would defecate fifty tons of, of iron-rich, you know, iron-rich iron. Sorry, iron on the surface, you know, to fertilize the phytoplankton. And phytoplankton. Um, you know, that uh, sequesters, that takes in at least half the carbon dioxide oh, and wow. gives half our oxygen. And the whales, uh, the phytoplankton feeds all the whole of the marine system. So whales are known as the whale pump. So they're just a ma massively ecologically important creature. So I'm um, basically breathing whale shit? <laughs> Well, we're we're all breathing everything. I mean, you know, like uh, we're, this is massive. A lot of shit we're everything's just changing into everything else. Um, That's true. And yeah, so I'm not sure about whether you're breathing whale shit, but well, I mean, through through the whole system because the, they poop in the thing, and then there's a reef, and then it turns the oxygen and the carbonation it goes in. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And, yeah. and and the um, I read the book. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? You know, it, it's all, it's all, it's all big, uh, what you said earlier, you know, without, well, if we start eliminating certain parts of this place, although I don't know, people always say to me, they go, Chris, we need world peace. And I'm like, you know how you achieve world peace, don't you? And they go, what? I go, kill all the humans. <laughs> Everybody get along fine after that. Well, um, we seem to be the, the continual problem on that. In fact, I've seen open high I'm not sure that, you know, th this might be the last issue of the book. I'm not sure there'll be a beastly part two. No, well, I mean, you know, I'm that gen. I'm the generation that was terrified of the nuclear um, yeah. bombs. You know, like I, I we were both to... under deaths, okay, cowering okay. from the Russians. Yeah, um, I, I went to bed as 15 year old, really scared, wondering whether somebody's going to put the finger on the button every night for a long time. I remember, mm -hmm. but um, and that's still there. That that is that threat is still there. But it, um, but the, you know, the threat that we have today is well look at look at look at the fires look at the you know the, the temperature crazy temperatures going on everywhere i mean you know it's yeah. suddenly as um, antonio Guterres said yesterday it's uh climate boiling not climate mm -hmm. change it's climate boiling so you know we, we need to step up like really really fast we, we, mm -hmm. we're, we're way too slow we're dawdling we're going to miss the train and there's only one train and it seems like we're kind of behind the train. You know, we've heard for, you know, a lot of years about it's going to get bad. And then all of a sudden this year, what is it like? The hottest it's yeah. ever been in 122,000 years, 22,000 years, something like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we are behind the train. So we really, really got to speed up. And, but, you know, there are things, there are fantastic. I mean, this is one of the reasons I get, I get really frustrated, you know, about uh, when you listen to the news. And we do have um you know when we're talking about technology you know we are going to need lots of technology but mm -hmm. um the technology there's no technology out there that works at scale you know there's there's proto technology there's all sorts of technology with you know that has, is a bit unreliable um and with its own possible consequences but we do have you know we do have habitats that we could restore and um re reboot ecological mm -hmm. That so it could just do an enormous amount and at huge scale, and it is frustrating that people forget the 
absolute importance of um you know the wild world what it can do it cleans the water i mean it, if you look at all the aerial shots lately of north america that has been burnt right it's completely black and there are these green ribbons that run through it beavers that's beavers beavers oh. sort of hydrology of the land recreating it as a sponge and trapping the water so you know there are some fantastic uh fixes out there uh mm. we just have to give you know animals need what we need space food mm. shelter mates and we need to give it to them there you go yeah. so what's going to happen when chat gpt and ai replaces uh humans and animals what's it going to be like then well, you know, <laughs> maybe better. I don't know. Be maybe I mean, right. you know, we'd have clean air. It'd yeah. be like when, like during COVID, how you know the environment cleaned up a little bit in yeah. cities and stuff because no one was driving around. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, it, you know, it's a bit sort of Frank. You know, a beautiful Frankenstein story. Maybe is just about around the corner. Who knows? <laughs> I'm surprised it's not here yet, but yeah. there's still time. So there we go. Uh, so what do you hope people come away with on your book? What do you hope that they walk away with going, holy crap? I, I, I want people, I really, really want people to understand not only the importance of animals, ecological roles, but their incredible abilities and intelligence and just to be aware, you know, like it, it, this happens in small, you know, small in small ways and in big ways you know we need some big things to happen but you know even mm. small even small ways you know you chop you, you cut down your the bush outside well a whole load of sparrows okay I, I know sparrows don't live over there but they live over here and we nearly lost them you know there's oh, a, they're, wow. they're really really f very few of them here now but you chop that bush down and that's actually not just a view it's a whole load of creatures homes and if we could if we understood animals better we would think about them better we would think about them in a in a much more intelligent way and understand them and we wouldn't do so much damage as we do so you know i, I would like us to be a lot more aware of you know the import their importance uh, understand how nature functions um and just come away with some fabulously interesting stories and just you know be amazed there you go. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go like more uh, animals on Facebook and like their posts so I can support them in that. Thank I don't you. know if that's the proper way to do it. <laughs> but no, this has been really insightful. And no, it, it's important that we understand our nature and our balance, right? And, uh, you know, that even though we are we think we're top dog in the universe, who knows, the aliens could be top dog, um, you know, and I don't know, the spiders are making inroads. Yeah, I mean, you know, we, we're definitely... We definitely are not top dog. I mean, we're, we're unlikely to be the ones that survive at the end of this. You know, cockroaches, rats, cockroaches, maybe. Yeah. But, you know, we 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 should be careful. We should cockroaches be really and U.S. House members, from what I understand, <laughs> in the Congress, will survive a nuclear war. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, so there you go. Well, yeah. it's been wonderful you on the show, Keggy, and uh, exciting to see your book get launched. And uh, hopefully, everyone will read it. Understand uh, how important this is because you know we we all need to live together on this planet uh, with the fellow animals because if we yes. don't, like they might yeah. eat us. Eh? You know, I don't want that. Well, it's you know it's the planet's other inhabitants. You know, like we're not the only ones. It's we, there yeah. are a whole load of other inhabitants. Wait, there's other they're, people. There? They, they they are so so important. You know, if you don't have if you don't have a few insects flying around, you're not going to be eating anything. There's going to be no pollinators. You know, no nothing to recycle anything. I mean, we're going to be stuffed. So we we should take note. Yeah, there you go. There you yeah. go. Well, thank you for coming on. Give us your .com so we can find you on the interwebs, please. Uh, it's Keggy Karu, K E W G I E C A R E W dot co dot UK. Although, if you put in dot com, I'm sure that would get you there eventually. Or, ke or at Keggy C. There so, you go. Yeah. There you go. Well, thank you very much for coming on the show. We really appreciate it. Thanks, so Manus, for tuning in. Go to goodreads.com, Fortress Chris Voss, LinkedIn.com, Fortress Chris Voss, and YouTube.com, Fortress Chris Voss, and all those crazy places on the internet. Thanks for tuning in. Be good to each other. Stay safe. We'll see thank you guys. You. Thank you, thank you, thank you.